the next presenting company will be Stable Therapeutics. And with us we have the CEO, Andreas Javard. And uh, welcome Andreas, and I leave the word to you. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Andreas Gerwald, I'm the CEO of Stable Therapeutics and I'm here to tell you about our innovative treatment for discogenic chronic low back pain. And just wanted to start off by giving you a little bit of a background. So therapeutic gap, we have a vast problem with patients suffering from discogenic back pain or chronic low back pain. Around 30% of all patients state that they become better or much better after physiotherapy and analgesics, while 70% of the patients do not improve after this treatment. So they end up in a never-ending loop without any effective treatments. And this really is the area we believe in stable, that we can offer patients something simple, something that is targeting the underlying cause of the back pain with the goal of making the per patient permanently pain relieved. So it's not just treating the symptoms, it's actually treating the underlying cause of the back pain. We have a clinical phase 2b trial ongoing in three countries in Europe. I'm going to tell you more about that later in the presentation. A typical patient for stable is, is younger than you might expect. It's somewhere between 30 to 50 years old and this type of back pain that is caused by disc generation causes around 40 percent of all chronic low back pain. So it's really one of the larger problems in regards to back pain. Patients have a drastically reduced quality of life. They have a lot of small problems, perhaps. They have problems lifting their kids, uh, tra traveling to a friend, or even taking, putting their socks on in the mornings. It's really small things, but that is very important for the patients. And being such a young patient population, from a health economic perspective, there is a lot of positive effects getting these people back into the society, getting them back to work, and to start living again. So, discogenic back pain consists primarily of two factors. It's leakage of inflammatory substances and an instability of the disc segment this, that is causing this type of pain. You have some uh, factors that increases the risk of getting this type of disease. You have, of course, the natural aging of the spine, which is a factor. You have some uh, inherited factors. Uh, you have some lifestyle factors being or if you are obese, for example, you have more pressure on the disc, which speeds up the gen generation process. But for many patients, it's, it's unknown cases. You don't really know why you're getting this type of disease. But something that you know is that it causes you a lot of problem. So what we are doing in Stable is that we offer a simple single injection treatment that targets the underlying causes of back pain. We inject our drug substance directly into the intervertebral disc where it triggers the cells to produce collagen. And by doing this, we transform the disc into connective tissue, stabilizing the segment and eliminates the possibility of leakage. So it's quite a simple treatment. Uh, it's, as I said, just one injection with a permanent lifelong effect. We're working with a known drug substance, which gives us access to existing toxicology data, which be, me, means that we are able to develop this project quicker forward, but also giving us a lower development risk, especially in, in the later clinical uh, trials where you quite often see uh, that side effects are causing the project to shut down rather than lack of effect. This transformation into connective tissue is also something that we have seen in our first clinical phase 1b trial that we conducted in Stockholm. That trial had a primarily, primary goal of showing safety and tolerability uh, and no side effects. And we're very happy to say that we were able to establish that, that treatment is safe and it's well tolerable and we saw no issues in continuing development to the ongoing clinical phase 2b trial. The trial was conducted in Stockholm. It was 15 patients with three different doses and it was a placebo controlled trial. And we were following the patients for up to 12 months to get both early effects of this treatment, but to be able to see long-term effect as well. But what I'm really, really happy about with, with this trial is, is the graph that you can see, that we actually saw a transformation into connective tissue assessed by MRI. We saw it in the highest dose, 
in the mi middle dose, but not in placebo or the lowest dose, which gave us a very good indication of which doses that we could continue with into the next clinical trial. So in summary, very, very positive results from a small clinical trial. So we are currently uh, having a clinical phase 2b trial ongoing. We have all the regulatory and ethical approvals in the three countries that we are conducting the trial, which is Russia, the Netherlands and Spain. We are recruiting patients in all countries and the goal is to recruit 126 patients to be able to give top-line results from this trial in H2 2022. We're going to follow the patients for, for the same amount as in the phase one, so up to 12 months. But the goal of this trial is to establish that we have efficacy, meaning that we have a decrease in pain measured by a numeric rating scale, which is a pain scale from 0 to 10, uh, but also increased function, which is me measured by a disability index that we call Oswestry Disability Index, which rates the functionality of the patients. So this is very important because pain, of course, is, is very challenging for the patient, but a lot of other uh, factors like functionality is very important from, from a payer perspective, but also from a patient perspective. You're able to do more things. So this trial, uh, when we recruit a patient, it is quite some process to include a patient in a trial. When you identify a patient, the doctor does it on their clinic. Uh, they do an MRI scan uh, to confirm that the patient is suffering from this disc-related back pain. They score their pain on a tablet for seven consecutive days. And this we do to decrease the variability because one of the challenges in, in pain studies is placebo, that you have a high placebo rate uh, in, in pain decrease. And to lower that, we are measuring pain over a longer period of time to get a more accurate measurement for, for the patient's actual pain. So if the patient fulfills the MRI criteria and the pain scoring criteria, they are included in the trial. They receive an injection of our drug STA363 uh, through a fluoroscopy or X-ray guided injection. And then we follow the patient for up to 12 months. We close the trial uh, and then we can show data from that trial. So, STA363, as I said, is based on a known drug substance. We're basing it on lactic acid. So it's very, very safe from that perspective. It also gives us access, as I said, to toxicology data, which lowers the development risk currently, but also in the later stage. It also gives great uh, logistic aspects because we have, have a good storage. We have up to 24 months in room temperature. Now, I think in, in a world that we are living in currently, we see a lot of challenges with, with transportation. We see a lot of challenges is that we need to consume uh, the drug uh, in a very limited amount of time. We don't have that challenge with our product. It's simple to handle, it's simple to store, uh, it's simple to produce, and there are no issues in upscaling the production for the coming clinical development or the market uh, introduction. We're going to register it as a pharmaceutical, uh, and if you look in the US, it's going to be a 505B2 uh, pathway. So, moving on to the market. This is really a global major market opportunity. A lot of patients, as I was saying, are suffering without any effective treatments. And I think that really demonstrates in, in the prevalence that there is around 100 million patients currently suffering in the US, in EU5, and in Japan. And every year, around 11 and a half million new cases are getting chronic disc-related back pain. And out of these patients, we believe that around 30% would be the initial target group for our injection-based treatment. And this is based to data from our clinical phase one uh, trial, where we saw, uh, based on MRI images, that this patient group is most suitable for our injection. And we are focusing on patients quite early in their disease progression. So when you fail physiotherapy and analgesics, stable will be the second uh, line uh, treatment option. Uh, so we aim to focus quite early in, in the development of, of the patient's disease. So competition-wise, stable has a unique 
uh, product with unique capabilities. And available on the market today, there are nothing that uh, targeting the underlying cause in the way that we are doing. You have analgesics, you have physiotherapy, you have spinal surgery that is available for a very, very limited uh, number of patients with a lot of side effects and of course a high cost. So competition for us lays in other research-based companies and primarily within stem cell companies. Uh, there are two players, it's one called Vivex in the US and Mesoblast. Uh, an Australian-based company that had gone furthest in their development. They have conducted phase three trial, but they failed their primary endpoints in that trial. So we don't really know what they are planning to, to do in the continued development, but we're very positive for, for us that we, we have a unique product, we have a focus on the disc where other actors is actually also working, but we have a robust, simple mechanism that really can stand out compared to other treatment regimes. We have a very good team. It's a broad experience from, from early stage development all the way to commercialization and product launch. Very happy as well that we have the last, uh, during this year we have expanded the team. We have recruited Sarah Rickardson. Uh, it's gonna work as CMC and regulatory affairs and really build the product development, prepare us for the coming steps in, in the pharmaceutical development. And we have also expanded our advisory board with three key opinion leaders, two from the US and one from uh, Europe expanding the other uh, advisors that we currently have. I'm very, very happy to have uh, first-hand access to physicians in, in the two major markets for our development. So if we're gonna summarize this, what is really what makes Stable unique? It's that we have something that can completely change the, how patients will be treated in the future. We have something that is targeting the underlying cause of the back pain with the goal of making the patient long-term pain relieved. We can really fill this huge medical gap and be a second line treatment where current treatment fails. We have shown that in our first trial that we can achieve this transformation. So we have proof of principle, proof of mechanism. We are currently conducting a clinical phase 2b trial that are enrolling patients in three different countries. We have a very good patent protection with granted patents in Europe, in US, Russia, uh, etc. So we have very broad uh, protection that give us a sufficient protection to develop this effectively forward. Working with a known drug component gives us a lower development risk both now and further on in the journey. And we have the opportunity to be the first player on the market really helping these vast number of patients suffering without eff effective treatments today. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much and open up for some questions. Thank you for your presentation. And I have some questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the status of the phase two clinical trial? So the phase two clinical trial is, is currently enrolling patients uh, in all the three countries. We have worked uh, extensively bro broadening uh, the network. So we have more clinics than we initially planned for. We have also worked with ref referral uh, clinics. So we have a large number of clinics that send patients to, to the clinics where they could be injected. So we have, we have a very positive uh, feeling about the trial. The investigators are very motivated. They would like to find patients. But of course, we need to be humble that we are are working in an environment with, with COVID that, that makes it more challenging. Chronic low back pain is, is not an acute condition, which makes the patient flow lower than it would, be, of course, be in a, in a known, known non-COVID environment. But we see progress. We see positive in indications from the clinics that the countries are slowly uh, opening up again. And we're very hopeful for, for the coming six months to be able to speed up patient recruitment. And why aren't there more companies developing drugs for such a widespread disease as low back pain? I think that's, that's a really good question and it's, it's a little bit of ch a challenging question as well. Uh, low back pain is of course uh, a vast problem. Uh, pharmaceutical companies in, in the past has been focused on a lot of symptoms. You have different types of painkillers and of course opioids which have not had the best reputation because you have the abuse side of it. So, so people were moving away a little bit from it. Uh, and 
focusing only on symptoms makes it difficult for the patients because they would like to get, get better in the long term. And I think that's open up for, for new players like, like ourselves that are more innovative, have a little bit of a different approach that can actually target the underlying cause. Placebo, of course, is also one of the challenges with, with pain trials. You're working with patient reported outcomes, so it's a subjective measurement. We, we work a lot with that, trying to, as I said, lower pr the placebo response, but also trying to educate uh, personnel, patients, to be able to become better pain reporters to, to lower, lower the, the placebo effect. So I think there are a couple of tricks that you can use to be able to get better data, get better trials, uh, and really grasp this market opportunity. And where do you see stable in a few years? I think our focus is now, of course, uh, on the conduction of, of the clinical phase 2b trial. That's where all our main resources are going to. But we, we see that after we have demonstrated, hopefully, positive results from, from the trial, that we, we see, of course, a clinical phase 3 trial uh, and then a market launch. And we believe that, that we would, should do it together with a partner. We are out meeting a lot of potential partners at different conferences. We see a high interest in, in Stable's uh, concept and what we are doing. And we would like to co-develop uh, with a partner through the coming uh, development so that we have a strong position to really grasp this opportunity, but also to maximize the opportunity of, of going quick uh, forward. Thank you for coming here today, Andrew. Thank you.